Hello, and welcome. We are finally back with Honkai Star Rail. Actually, we already wanted to play yesterday, but I had to do some troubleshooting, sadly. Because OBS was saying, nope, I will not let you stream to OBS. Uh, not to OBS, to Twitch. So, yeah. And also already had to, like troubles on the Sunday stream, so yeah, for those who know who were watching it, you knew that I had issues with my internet because lightning like lightning strike could like literally fried the router. So yeah. <laughs> but hey, we are Finally back, and this time around, we want to play the event of the so-called Wardens. Which is also about, like, the new character, which I've also already been building up. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of, like, characters grinding. Um, she here to talk to you. You're here, here first. little one. I saw some memory fragments drifting outside the window, and I intend to salvage them. <laughs> How cute! As if it will blow a black swan. By salvage, I mean to slowly get close to those memories and then exert my memo keeper power to retrieve them. There are too many discarded things in the sea of stars. Our predecessors' trodden paths and forgotten pasts should have left behind vivid marks across the universe. I once felt regret for those that were lost without a trace. But fortunately, we were later able to sense, discover, and preserve them. Hmm. I wonder what stories have been left behind in the memory fragments that we found today. Good question. Settle down. Allow me to manifest the memories from these fragments, and I'll share them with you. Okay, I actually haven't talked to her on the ship yet. I have like a few characters who haven't actually talked to you yet since I'm locking them at like guest visitors to this. If you need to send a message, please check it promptly. Hmm. Phew. What's up, Pom Pom? Uh, just got a message from the Xian Shou La Fu. Looks like it'll conflict with our original schedule. Hmm. Huh. It's been a while, my friends on the Astral Express. How's your trailblazing expedition going? Soon, the Sien Zhou Law Fu will be holding the Luminary War Dance. Those who have aided the Law Fu in overcoming the crisis are cherished allies of the Sien Zhou. Thus, on behalf of the Seat of Divine Foresight, I'm extending an invitation to attend the ceremony. Your presence would be greatly appreciated. Thanks for the invite, Jingyuan. Well, things are getting lively. We've barely recovered from the family's Charmony Festival, and we're already being invited to another special event. <laughs> yeah, true. Why not think about it this way? Our trailblazing expeditions are turning into blast expeditions, where we eat, drink, and play wherever we go. Blast? Expedition? Yeah! Wherever we go, we eat, play, and have a blast! Wow, do we need to so explain that? So we should leave March behind to take care of the Express? Uh, hey! <laughs> that's not what I meant! I'm all for some fun! I just hope there won't be any surprise party crashers, like Friday or Saturday. The Sien Zhou La Fu has recently overcome a crisis. By holding the war dance, they're demonstrating to everyone that they've returned to a state of peace and safety. Which is good. But that's what everyone said before we went to Pentaconi. 
You'll be totally safe under the family's protection. Well, that was a blatant lie. No need to worry. The war dance is not like the Charmony Festival with all its <laughs> hidden secrets. It's just a festival to honor the Rainbow Arbiter and the Cloud Knights, who fought against the abominations of abundance and protected the Xianzhou ships. Aside from Star Skiff performances, it's mostly martial contests. Nothing too different from the Taikian Roboball contest we've seen before. What do you I think, Hilo? Since we've accepted Miss Black what Swan's proposal, we should probably head to Amphorius for refueling. Hmm, there's certainly no rush. This trailblazing expedition is quite unique, and the Express needs to be fully stocked and prepared before moving on to the next stop. With Madame Harta's help, I was planning to deliver some Leviathan fossils from Kalinga Abyss to Ron May, member 81 of the Genius Society. It could earn us some favors before we set off. However, it may take a few weeks. Ah, so that means we're not going to the Lafu. Okay, just split up. Being an adult means maintaining relationships, whether we like it or not, Marge. Since we've been invited, it's only right for the Astral Express to attend the ceremony. So, here's the plan. Pom Pom will take everyone to the Sienjo Lafu. Mr. Yang and I will meet up with Ron May and fulfill our promise. Meanwhile, you, March, and Don Hung will represent the Express and attend the war dance. We get a party. What do you two think? <laughs> sure, sounds great. <laughs> I don't hear any objections. Now that everyone's on board with the plan, it's time to work to the Xianzhou La Fu. That would find interesting to see what happens over at like uh, Himikos and like World's POV when they like. Um... Yeah, go to her, man. Kalinga Abyss. What does she expect to find there? Current research on the Leviathan merely proves how little we know about such life forms. That's why geniuses are interested in that field. Science is all about uncovering the unknown. Conversation between the two adults, Prims with complex jargon from blah blah blah. That was the first again. Um. From assumptive astrobiology chemistry to trans dimensional evolutionary ferro. Evolutionary theory, feeling carried with an air of dense perplexity. <laughs> I'm not surprised uh, that there's two can chat about stuff like that. Don't miss us too much. <laughs> if I stumble upon some cool Leviathan fossils, I'll bring a few back as souvenirs for you. Sweet. Himeko really knows how to convince people. <laughs> Between Leviathan fossils and the war dance, the latter definitely sounds more fun. Uh, by the way, Don Hung, this time you'll be taking a stroll with us on the Lafu, right? Would be about time. <laughs> and just let you two wander around aimlessly on the Lofu by yourselves? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Plus, Mr. Yang is right. The Ambrosial Arbor crisis just ended. And both the long life and short life species are still feeling uneasy. And that's why Jing Yuan wants to organize the war dance to show that the Xianzhou Lo Fu is stable and safe. And is it though? since he has extended an invitation, it's only right that I visit my old friend. I mean, for those who have seen the trailer, there will be some stuff going on with, like, the prison. Uh, coming back to this place brings back so many memories, you know? Uh, hey, I'm not actually gonna recite a poem. I was just thinking about all the twists and turns we went through when we first arrived on the Sienjo. Huh. This time, we're not being forced or enticed. Or chasing after wanted criminals. And we didn't have to sneak in through the cargo dock. This trip has been least. incredibly smooth. Quite unusual, I must say. I mean, not unusual if you're like, if, if you like, if you do gameplay rounds because it's easy for you to come back here every time you want to, but still. 
Such is the fate of us nameless, I suppose. Tomorrow is how the Skyfang Commission's notice to the Express has docked on the Zian show. Are you guys in love who already? Yep, just got to Starsk of Heron. Ha! Huh. The channel sent me to welcome you at Starsk of Haven. See you in a bit. Alright. We have been with Yan Sheng. Is the Starsk of Haven always this crowded? Oh, there are so many people here. I can barely hear anything. <laughs> Yenqing said General Jingyuan sent him to welcome us, but where is he? Let's wait for him in front of the loom. It's the most prominent landmark on the dock. Hmm. I guess so. Hey, you guys! Hold on a moment! What's the Pepeshi doing uh, here? Did they just call us? Oh, look at their outfits. They're from Penacony, right? Are you familiar with the Sienjo Lafu? We know a little bit about it. What do you need? We are from Penacony. Maybe you've heard of it. We came to this ship to gather interesting materials for making dream bubbles. Oh, we just left there. Oh, talk about coincidence. That's great. Do you know any must-see attractions on the Lofu? Hmm. Exactly. We're Sienjo experts. I would say well, actually most of the, the tourists around at the moment are here to attend the war dance. And that's why we're here too. Like the, the temple of the Vidyara. The one is like a really cool extraction with all like the water being split and everything. <laughs> yeah, we know about that ceremony. But isn't the fighting ring still closed? I've heard the ring was actually converted from a huge decommissioned Lafu fighter jet. Okay. No doubt about it. It's a massive fighter jet. It's got to be larger than a civilian star skiff. But for now, all we can do is wait until the war dance starts in a few weeks before we can board it. We've still got work to do, so we can't just sit around waiting for it to start. Hey, why That's why we're asking weeks? you about some must-see attractions. We're looking for unique experiences that you won't find on Penacony. Our clients love these kinds of dream bubbles the most. Uh, you're the expert here. <laughs> Give them some suggestions. Crystal <laughs> Garden is nice. Scale Scorch for Scale. Oh yeah! Fixtral Garden! It's famous for supernatural stuff. With those mischievous heliobi floating around, it's pretty fascinating. Supernatural? I don't really like scary things, but our clients will love it. Ooh, it does sound interesting. Let's go check out Fixtral Garden. <gasps> Maybe we'll bump into each other there. Maybe. Look, Yan Ching's here. Wow, really? Let's go catch up with him. Where's the girl? Ah, oh, so there. There you are. Everyone, this way. Hey, everyone. It's been a while. Well, it doesn't feel like it's been that long since we last saw you. But, Yen Ching, are you? What's up, Miss March? Uh, they say kids grow up really fast. Uh, Yen Ching, are you a little bit taller than before? I wouldn't notice a difference, really. <sighs> We've only been away for a few months. <laughs> hmm. This is a funny one. Uh, what are you doing? Sorry, but after our previous adventures, I've become suspicious of whoever greets us first. <laughs> uh, you have that to answer. be suspicious around me, too. You know, the last time we came to the Sienjo, the first person who greeted us was... Uh, I get it. Better safe than sorry. 
didn't expect that answer, but okay. I've never seen the Lafu so lively before. <clears throat> I was a bit worried that holding the war dance right after the Ambrosial Arbor crisis might be too soon. But seeing the bustling Starskiff Haven, I understand why General Jing Yuan chose this timing. Yep. There's people from other delves and travelers like you three who've come from afar. With the war dance coming up, there's a huge number of visitors pouring into the Starskip Haven. The Cloud Knights are working hard to keep the security tight. The General said this ceremony would help the Sienjo Lafu recover from the crisis. Well, let's hope so. It's a way to showcase our martial spirit, reassure people, boost morale, and attract visitors from other planets to promote trade and peace. By the way, the Sienjo Alliance places great importance on this ceremony too. The Sienjo ships, the Zhu Ming and the Yao Qing, have both sent messengers to offer their blessings. Ooh. Yeah, I wonder if you've heard of it. It's known as the Star Forge, and it's responsible for providing more than half of the Cloud Knight's armaments. The Sienjo Zhu Ming boasts skilled craftsmasters, and General Huayan is a top-notch craftsman himself. Ah, <sighs> if only I could get a sword forged by him. I'd be on cloud nine. <laughs> By the way, Yenqing, where are we headed next? Uh, I'm sorry for talking your ear off. The general wants to catch up with you at the Palace of Astrum. He's been eager to hear about how the Express has been doing. <laughs> it's funny how he tries to act all mature, but whenever it comes to something he's interested in, you can really see his childish side. What's so bad about it? I agree. <laughs> All units, assemble quickly! Get ready to protect the crowd! Huh. I just mentioned security, and now all of a sudden something's gone wrong. Excuse me, I need to go check out the situation. Mm, just as shinx as much. We'll go with you. Let's see what's going on then. <gasps> Protect the civilians. I'll deal with him. Sweet. Moon Rage. Here's the mark can end in moon rage state. After enemies use attacks, apply one stack of bloodlust to enemy units that can trigger the moon rage. The bloodlust reaches a certain number of stacks to unit in this moon rage state. At the same time, the rage can be increased with each round of contents. Okay, it's just like. Arson? Why are there Boris in here? This ends now. Sounds like it's just like. Uh, Firefly ultimate for you know, enemies. Every petal all will be swept away by the wind. Like fireflies until so everything burns to ashes! Fight to live! Grace and elegance. <laughs> I hear Stay put. Protect, protect So this is the warmth of life. Fiends or devils? I'll crush them all! Dreams do come true. The mood is set. Let the show begin! I will claim victory for my set for the seas of faith! I really like this party. I've been using it a lot for farming and such. It's worth as well. Not good! <laughs> Thanks for the help. Uh, uh, sorry, no time to chat. Uh, could you give me back my? Uh. Nope. <laughs> I promise. Um, 
Just seem to be getting a sword sword by her. <laughs> Why not? Wait, my sword! I'm sorry, but I'm afraid we'll have to put our plans on hold for now. I need to find out what's going on. All right. While we appreciate your rescue, my Sienjo friends, don't you think it's a bit too much to detain us and our cargo? Sorry, but we've been ordered to detain you and your cargo for inspection until we figure out the source of the attack. Once we're done with the formalities, we'll let you and your cargo go. Oh, but this shipment isn't even meant for the Lafu. And it's IPC's patented technology. Who do you think you are to conduct an inspection? Come on. According to the protocol, all cargo arriving on the Lawfu must go through inspection. Oh, but we didn't officially enter your dock at all. We just sought refuge in your dock because we were attacked by the Borisans. <sighs> Looks like this argument could go on forever. Let's not get involved in a heated dispute that won't lead to a resolution. True. Let's just move past them. Who's in charge here? I need some answers. It's my fault. We let our guard down for a moment. I take full responsibility. With the war dance approaching, safety should be a top priority. Now, tell me, how did Boris and prisoners end up in Starskip Haven? According to the protocol, Boris and prisoners should be held on a Starskip and taken directly to the Shackling prison under strict supervision without ever touching the ground. Who allowed a prisoner transport ship to dock at the passenger terminal? Please don't blame this captain. This incident involves the Chu Ming's diplomatic vessel. Who are you? I'm Liu Ju, an officer of the patrol defense squad. Thank you for your help, Lieutenant Yen Ching. The situation unfolded rapidly, and it shouldn't be held against the captain. Here's what happened. An IPC transport ship was attacked by the Borison just before arriving, and the Ju Ming's diplomatic vessel came to the rescue. They fought off the Borison pirates and imprisoned them on their ship. So, an IPC ship was attacked by the Borison near the Lafu, and the Juming envoy saved them? Uh, this sounds complicated. Honestly, it gives me a headache too. The Juming diplomatic ship, adhering to standard procedure, docked at the passenger terminal to hand these criminals over to the La Fu. You know, with all the outsiders flooding onto the La Fu, the Starskiff lanes are under immense pressure. The Boris and Desperados decided to put up a fight before the prisoner transport Starskiff could get there. And that's what you just witnessed. Huh. We'll make sure these prisoners are sent to the Shackling prison as soon as possible. I see. It's an unusual situation indeed. I'll report it to the security department of the Realm Keeping Commission and ask for their cooperation in handling the aftermath. Uh, maybe I should gather more details from others so that the seed of divine foresight can have a better understanding of the situation. Guess we're playing a bit of detective right now. The crowd has calmed the crowd, then dispersed, and the street was restored to its peaceful state. Oh, you look much mature now, Yanqing. Please don't tease me, Miss March. The situation on the Sienjo before the war dance is like a calm lake that can be disturbed by even the smallest pebble capable of generating far-reaching ripples with even the slightest disturbance. What are those people... I mean, those monsters we just dealt with? Hmm... Borisans, yeah, yeah, what are they? Those werewolf monsters are known as Borison. They are abominations of abundance, and we've been fighting them for a very long time. The Borison have been a powerful force for a long time, plundering and enslaving many worlds. The threat they pose is just as terrible as the Swarm Disaster, and the Alliance even had a fierce war with them three decades ago. And their presence has faded over the years, but who would have thought? Wait, is that the same war? 
the the colleague of oh, how was she called again? I totally forget her name of like the 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 the, 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 the sky faring commission. I think it was. I'm not sure if it was that or not. According to that officer, they attacked an IPC ship near the Senjo Lo Fu. Such a brazen attack seems quite unusual to me. Yeah, that's what I find strange too. It seems like the IPC and the Borison have some serious grudges. Wouldn't be surprised to be honest. Well, enough with the chit chat. The general wants me to take you to the Palace of Astrum. I'd love to chit chat a little longer, but there are some things that can't be left unchecked. Hmm? Is it a serious matter? Maybe you'll need our help in hunting down the Borison? Thank you, but it's no big deal. By the way, that young lady who just appeared, she took my sword. I'm thinking of filing a lost property report at the Realm Keeping Commission to see if I can get it back. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt she did it on purpose. I mean, she could have just left it there. <laughs> you provided report. I gotta go fetch the popcorn. Yes. <laughs> Don't that. remind me. I just zoned out for a moment. That's all. All right. Let's not keep the general waiting. Don't worry. There aren't many people out there with that kind of talent. It shouldn't be too hard to find her. True. There sure are a lot of troublemakers around. Hmm. Okay, that dude is immediately sus. Oh. That's not what I want to do. Uh, what was she called again? Yukon. Right. Why is she also exactly like listed as the last one? Been a long journey, Elder Wyatt. Thank you for your presence. General, I brought our guests from the Express. Uh, oh, I'm sorry for my bad timing. I didn't know you were meeting a guest, General. Don't worry, you're just in time. <laughs> it's been a while, my friends from the Astral Express. <laughs> I dreamed about a pedicone. <laughs> it's oh. true, actually. <laughs> well, it's an honor to be in your dreams, my friend. It's actually really not wrong. We did call them in that one dream against the the boss, Panacone. Allow me to introduce you to General Wyatt. He's the Arbiter General of the Sienjo Zhuming, known as the Flaming Heart. Why is he so small and old? <laughs> no need to be so formal. I'm just a tourist here, no different from other tourists who've come to attend the ceremony. Elder Huayen is not only one of the Arbiter Generals, but also the Furnace Master of the Artisanship Commission. Besides his martial skills, he excels in forging various weapons. Such talents are unique, even among the Arbiter Generals. Be it Arbiter General or Furnace Master, these are merely titles given to me long ago. I've retired several times already, but <laughs> with the current change in circumstances, the Marshal has called me back to duty, and I had no choice but to answer the call. Well, in the end, I'm to blame. 
Living such a long life naturally brings its share of disapproval. It's, it's an, an honor, honor to meet, meet you, you, General Huayan. It's my honor to meet you, General Huayan. <laughs> Glad to meet you. No need to be all formal. Today I'm just a guest on the Lawfu, the same as all of you. So, these three are the ones you mentioned, Jing Yuin? The heroes who helped you with the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis? Oh, there's our thief. Indeed. There's Don Hung, March 7th, and him. Without their help, I'm afraid the Law Fu might not have easily overcome this crisis. So, the Imbibitor Lune's reincarnation has returned to the Law Fu and will attend the war dance. I'd love to have a drink with you, should the chance present itself. You're more than welcome, General Huayan. And this young friend is? Yan Ching, my apprentice. He remains by my side as my retainer due to his youth, which I hope will season him with experience. He will stand for the Law Fu's Cloud Knights in the upcoming war dance. Ready to take on all kinds of challenges. Great, great! It's a real treat to see so many talented young people around here today. Oh, I almost forgot. This is my apprentice, Yun Li. Uh, it's you! Oh, it's you. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Oh, you two already know each other? Guess we don't need any introductions, then. What a coincidence! I was afraid I'd have trouble finding this girl. Oh? Now you've piqued my curiosity. Tell me, how did you two become acquainted? She helped me capture the escaped Borison prisoners at the Starskip Haven. Allow me to express my gratitude for you. But when you left, you took my flying sword with you. Your flying sword? <laughs> oh, so that's why I found a dagger in my bag. Turns out it's yours. Yes, okay. it is. Now that we've met again, I hope... <laughs> nope, that won't do. What? Won't do? How mean. <sighs> you want your sword back? Right? Well, you can't just take it back. On the Juming, when you lose your sword on the battlefield, you have to reclaim it on the battlefield. <laughs> As for this little sword, it was supposed to strike that escaped Borison prisoner. But unfortunately, its owner's agitated state caused it to fly off like a kite with a broken string, and it missed its target. By the way, if I hadn't caught it and helped it hit its mark, that Borison prisoner would have gotten away. Hold on a second, Lee. You took my sword without even asking, and now you're refusing to give it back? <sighs> so much for Lafu Swordmasters. What did you just say? If you just stepped up and took your sword back from me fair and square, I would have totally respected you. But nope, you tried to play it down, expecting me to just hand it back to you like it's nothing. In front of everyone. I mean, I can guess that they had attrition, but still, it's Yan Ching's sword. <laughs> he fucking owns it. <laughs> it's not like you even gave him a, a chance to get it back in the first place. With all due respect, you don't honor your sword, so you don't deserve it. Hasn't anyone told you that taking without asking is stealing? If you want to settle this with swords, fine. Let's have a one-on-one -on -one duel right now. Yang Ching. <laughs> well, that's more like it. Just be careful, because I'm not as easy to handle as the Borison. <sighs> You too. Be quiet and apologize to Yen Ching. <laughs> hey! Who 
Whose side are you on, Grandpa? I... um... I don't take sides. It's a small misunderstanding, and an apology would be too much. I've heard about the Zhu Ming's incredible swordplay and craftsmanship. Most notably, the legendary Flame Wheel Octet. Seeing Miss Yun Li, who is among those ranks today, well, I must say, she definitely has that fiery edge. <laughs> Such grandiose names. Some folks love to spin these fancy titles, trying to set the Cloud Knights apart. Yun Li is still just a young girl, a bit awkward and hot-tempered. So please forgive her if she's being rude. <laughs> I like it how Jing Yuan is like being really embellishing more when it comes to titles and he's just like, uh, fuck titles, they don't even matter anyway. <laughs> well, everyone, and I'm Elder with him Yen there. and I have some business to discuss. Like with For now, Yen. Yang Ching, why don't you entertain our guests and take Miss Yun Li to the inn? I'll find another chance to talk with you all. I'd like to express my gratitude to the Astral Express for helping the law food during the crisis. I've only done it already like multiple times. That's so kind of you. I mean, you've already thanked us so many times. <laughs> Please exactly. forgive me for coming at an inconvenient time. You needn't apologize, General Huayan. All right, Yun Li. Take this opportunity to clear things up with Yen Ching. Yeah, yeah. It's better to make friends than enemies. But I won't be heading to the inn just yet. I want to visit Lingsha. She just arrived in the Lafu and could use some help settling in. Is she just saying voices Fu Tao? They sound eerily similar. Just without, like, the... Just less, less over exaggerated. Yang Ching, once you've helped our guests get settled, go to the Artisanship Commission for me. I've heard about the attack and the detainment of the IPC ship. Ching Zhu sent word that the IPC members are protesting and wish to have their cargo back. See if you can calm them down. Don't get aggressive. Just make it clear that the Sienjo La Fu has no intention of violating their rights. I'm on it. All right. This trip is totally worth it. Compared to the Juming, the Lafu is so much livelier. But it's a shame the Lafu swordmasters don't seem that great. Glad to meet you too. Are you here to participate in the war dance? You just were attending for an hour, but maybe. Of course. To honor martial arts, the Cloud Knight's ring is always open to outsiders. If you can defeat the ringmaster selected by the Sienjo, you'll not only win rewards and prizes, but also be making a name for yourself. Sounds sweet. Sounds tempting, doesn't it? True. I would be up for it. Ah. That's how outsiders refer to my peers in the Juming Cloud Knights and the Artisanship Commission. We all train under Grandpa's guidance, learning the art of craftsmanship and swordplay. That's how we got that title, I guess. Just don't mention it in front of Grandpa. He always says that empty titles bring pointless challenges and conflicts. We Juming Swordmasters pride ourselves on the success of the group over the individual. Interesting. I have some things to do. Besides, little Yun Ching doesn't seem too happy about me tagging along. Yeah, you're right. I took it with my skills. So I guess you can say I'm a robber or something. How dare he imply I'm a thief? Totally different. Uh, how is that different? Besides, <laughs> the sword seems scared of its own master. I'd like to ask him, you claim to cherish your sword as your life. 
Yet you don't even recognize the state it's in right now? I didn't intend to keep his sword. I was planning to take this chance to return it to him. But now, I've changed my mind. I'll give that poor flying sword some proper maintenance. I won't consider returning the sword unless he learns how to say please, hello, thank you, and sorry. <laughs> so he can forget about it for now. You scratch your head, feeling a tingling sensation on your scar, but the thought of the impending troubles young Jing will face. Why you distracted, the young girl has already wandered off on her own. Her whereabouts unknown. <laughs> Alright. This is the report Ching Zhu just sent me. Let me take a look. Hmm. Huh. It looks like the general has given me a tough challenge. He wants me to try and help put the IPC's mind at ease. Well, it's not exactly a test. As Cloud Knight officers, we not only learn the art of war and martial arts, but also occasionally have to handle diplomatic disputes. It's just, you know, talking things out isn't as straightforward as duking it out with weapons on the battlefield. This is especially true when you're up against the IPC, with their non-stop corporate babble. You can be a diver if that's yeah. Well, let's not worry about that for now. Shall I take you to the inn? Sure, let's go. I don't even want to be a part of this squabble with the IPC. It is the law Fu's honor to have you in attendance at the war dance. Yet, the fact that a simple martial arts ceremony has attracted esteemed generals from the Zhu Ming and the Yao Qing implies intentions beyond mere spectating. Might there be any specific instructions from the marshal? You're overthinking it, Jin Yuen. As I said, I'm here to broaden my granddaughter's horizons. I have no ulterior motives. However, I have no clue what the Yao Qing Arbiter General has in mind. Do you remember when you accepted this position? I told you that an Arbiter General's battlefield goes beyond the physical one. You'll need to lead and manage everything on the Sienjo. The title of Arbiter General holds a weight far greater than its literal meaning. So many years have passed, and you've done well. However, longevity for the Sienjo people can be a curse. Living too long means that every mistake you made will lurk in the shadows. And one day, they'll eventually catch up to you. Hmm. The Marshal knows everything that has happened on the Lawful. As for the Merlin's Claw of the Yao Qing, she has come specifically for you. Ah. Speaking of which, why hasn't she arrived yet? They say the Merlin's Claw strikes like lightning. Being late isn't her style. That's not true, General Hua Yan. She's been here a while, but I'm sure you've heard of her unbridled nature. As soon as she disembarked from the Star Skiff, she mentioned having something to attend to and simply disappeared. <laughs> You must be the messengers from the Sienjo Yao Qing, I assume. We are Jiao Cho and Moza, retainers of the Merlin's Claw. It's an honor to meet you in person, Arbiter Generals. Hmm. Now this is interesting. A guest who doesn't come to visit but sends a message instead. Hmm. What does she mean? Tell me. What could be more important to her than coming here? Master heard about a spectacular view in Scale Gorge Waterscape. I believe she went there to enjoy it. Hmm. A spectacular view? Ha! Did you hear that, Jing Yuen? This person is being sarcastic. 
Please do not misunderstand me, General Hua Yen. I was simply stating the truth. Master thought it would be inappropriate to keep you waiting, so she sent us here. Once she's finished with admiring the scenery, she'll personally come and apologize to the both of you. I also know his voice. He sounds really close to Sedef from Fire Emblem Three Houses, which I'm currently playing on my German channel. Drat! I forgot to ask you and Lee to return my sword. Uh, you already did ask her. And I don't think you will get your sword back so early. I'm acceptable. Every sword is precious to me. If it weren't for the general's interference, I would have taught that shameless girl a lesson in swordplay. Uh, by the way, I don't know if it's just me, but the general seemed a little... reserved. Could it be because of Elder Wyan's visit? Reserved? Really? <laughs> uh, maybe I'm just overthinking things. No, you're not. When I entered the Palace of Astrum, I realized that the messenger from the Xianzhou Zhu Ming was actually the Arbiter General himself. So, the messenger from the Xianzhou Yao Qing must be the Merlin's Claw herself, I presume. That's right. <sighs> well, that's what makes this entire thing so unusual. What's so unusual about it? They simply received an invitation from Jing Yuan, just like the crew, right? <sighs> the war dance is just a small festival. And now we have two Arbiter Generals from other Xianzhou ships here. I'm afraid they're here for something more. Huh. Maybe they've come to hold Jing Yuan accountable for the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis? Hold him accountable? Uh, come on, didn't the Law Fu fall victim to the disciples of Sanctus Medicus and the Antimatter Legion? Why would they blame the victim? Hmm. Yeah, I feel like it might be something else. Don Shu's rebellion and Fentilia's scheming are merely one side of the story to the other Arbiter Generals of the Alliance. Only a single piece of incontrovertible evidence remains creating an endless source of potential complications. The Ambrosial Arbor. Yes. It's undeniable that the Plague Mark, which was subdued by the Xianzhou Lo Fu, has resurfaced. But was it really a conspiracy instigated by the Antimatter Legion? Or does it indicate a traitorous intent from within the Lo Fu, implicating Jing Yuan himself? Once the spark of suspicion is kindled, it proves hard to extinguish. The general must have had that in mind when he invited us to attend the war dance. Ah, uh, what was I thinking? Seriously, <laughs> here I was looking forward to a carefree and enjoyable trip. But it seems wherever we go, drama is just around the corner. Yep. Aw, oh, I was so excited. I thought those Arbiter Generals were just here to see the ceremony. By the way, I heard that an alchemist from the Juming diplomatic ship has arrived. And rumors say that she's to be the new Cauldron Master of the Alchemy Commission on the Wafu. Hmm, an alchemist from the Juming serving as the Cauldron Master on the Lofu? Well, it's not unheard of, the timing itself. Thanks to your words, Mr. Don Hung. Now I finally see the underlying tensions. The general is under tremendous pressure right now, but I was completely oblivious to his troubles. Ugh, how naive of me. Yep, you're so funny. Uh, come on, don't think like that. Leave the adult matters to the adults. Even if you wanted to do something for the general, it's not like you can do anything. <sighs> It doesn't really make it better. Uh, did I say something wrong? Again? 
Yeah, just Miss March is right. I don't have the skills to share the general's burdens at the moment. Still, I'll do my best to follow his instructions. Let's go. Once I've taken you to your accommodations, I need to go to the Artisanship Commission to handle the IPC's protest. Uh, he looks like he has a lot on his mind. We can't just let him go alone. Uh, why don't we accompany you to the Artisanship Commission? Oh, no. Uh, this is too much trouble. While I appreciate your kindness, dealing with the IPC's workers could be tricky. I'm afraid this will cause trouble for the Express. It's not like we always have trouble with the uh, IPC. No worries. We're pretty experienced in dealing with the IPC. You've heard of the Ten Stone Hearts? We've dealt with quite a few of them, right? Three of them, to be exact. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk about that, I was it was weird. Hey, who's bragging? Anyway, this time it'll just be a few ordinary IPC workers. Surely you don't think they'll be even trickier than adventuring, do you? Well, since you're willing to help, I won't decline your kindness. Let's head to the Artisanship Commission and meet them. I mean, she's true about the adventuring part, but hey. Also, I forgot. This is just I haven't checked out yet. For whatever reason, I still missed a chest in you. It's just a new one. Oh, it's a new one. With a dude talking to me about it. I don't care what you're talking about, just let me. If there's something you don't understand... Oh, okay, he's not letting me open it. Okay, then... Uh, I feel like I've already talked to him once because of that. You think you're that good, Now that I think huh? about it. Just already forgot about it. with you CN Joe people? I think I get it now. In your words, this is called looting a burning house, right? But I am trying to reason with you here. <sighs> Ugh, that toxic voice sounds familiar. Haven't I heard it before in Arum Alley? Mm-hmm. You know that, you know dude. What? This isn't my first time dealing with the Skyfaring Commission. I can handle your unreasonable ways, but straight up snatching IPC cargo, isn't that going a bit too far? Just as I've said it many times already, once we've inspected the cargo and completed the security check, you can be on your way. Is there something wrong with your ears or is it just your brain? I'm hearing you loud and clear. I'm thinking clear and my answer is crystal clear. Not a chance. Keep detaining my cargo and I'll file a complaint directly with your general. <laughs> yes. You jerk. Who are you calling a dog? Wait. Why are you here? <laughs> Staying on the Sienjo, are you? What terrible luck. Wherever you go, disasters aren't far behind. Aren't you the guest from the Astral Express? What brings you and Yanqing to the Artisanship Commission? Trouble caused by the IPC? I'd say it's caused by the Skyfaring Commission! Oh, it's caused by you, Scott. Looks like you've met this IPC worker before. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a good or a bad thing. But you do know that he is just a, uh, just a loud dog barking, so yeah. I was sent here to deal with the IPC protest, Ms. Shikwe. What's going on here? <sighs> As you know, this IPC transport ship was attacked by the Borison and rescued by the Juming's diplomatic ship. Then the Cloud Knights were instructed to bring it back to the dock for repairs and inspections. And this is Mr. Scott, the person in charge of this transport ship. So, you're Scott. 
I've heard him mention you. Weren't you kicked off the Lafu before? Why did you come back? Again. Like I wanted to come back. I thought I'd just dock at the harbor for repairs and leave this forsaken place for good. Little did I know, as soon as the ship entered the harbor, a bunch of Cloud Knights showed up and snatched all our cargo from the hold. What do you mean by snatched? I've told you a million times. It's a security check. Then why did you bring the cargo to the Artisanship Commission? You even brought in some shady craftsmen. It's obvious you're trying to steal the IPC's patented technology! Listen here. Firstly, the Skyfaring Commission detected dangerous items that could possibly be weapons in your cargo hold. That's why they called me here, to double check. Secondly, where the heck did you get the idea that I'm a shady <laughs> craftsman? Even if there are dangerous items, what do they have to do with you? It's not even being shipped to the law, fool. We'll just fix the ship and be on our way. We won't unload our cargo here. But you'll have to stay in the port for several days before your ship is repaired and you can take off again. How can we just leave unchecked items sitting here? I understand, but we don't need to disassemble the cargo if it's just a security check, right? In most cases, we don't. However, our scans discovered that the cargo doesn't only contain machinery, but also some substance that resembles biological tissue. Biological tissue? Does this crate contain living things? I'm afraid we'll need to wait for the Alchemy Commission for further confirmation. In any case, according to our regulations, we need to unseal one of the crates for further examination. But this IPC specialist has been hindering us on the grounds of patent secrecy. The Alliance's regulations on biological products are very strict. Without further inspection, there is no way for the Skyfaring Commission to release the cargo. Oh, really? Fine! If anyone lays a finger on that shipment, they'll have me to deal with. It doesn't matter if it's mechanical or biological. It's none of your business. I'm filing a complaint against the Skyfaring Commission's ridiculous regulations. Yeah, not so rig ridiculous, <sighs> so Mr. though. Mr. Scott seems stubborn and difficult to persuade. Honestly, I really don't want to have a vicious confrontation with the IPC. I heard how you helped Aram Ali. The IPC representative back then was Mr. Scott, right? Since you've dealt with them before, it looks like I'll have to rely on you again. What are you guys whispering about over there? Just hurry up and give us back our cargo. Get down and bark. Any of you give you more or else harder than you equal to your opponent? More equal to your opponent is considered a successful, otherwise it's deemed a failure. Our party smart drops to zero. Negotiating immediately ends. The negotiation choices will release different outcomes, which can increase or decrease in my eyes and make choices turn over again, okay. Can you use negotiation strategies to play various negotiation games? Okay. As I recall, this guy won't listen to reason and can only be persuaded with intimidation. But he does seem to follow rules to some extent. Let's use that against him. Okay. Speaking of regulations, we have our own laws and regulations too. According to Article 4 of the Cienjo Alliance IPC trade consensus, the Alliance and IPC shall never infringe on each other's intellectual property rights. Hmm. Skip this one. Negotiation. Double this. Ah. The Alliance can sign a non-disclosure agreement with you. That way, you won't have to worry about any infringements, right? 
We can sign a mutually acceptable non-disclosure agreement in accordance with the IPC's rules. Well, uh, that makes sense, but how can we trust you to honor the terms? <clears throat> Even if we set aside the secrecy of intellectual property, these prototypes built by the Intelligentsia Guild are incredibly valuable, beyond your wildest imagination. If anything goes wrong, you won't be able to pay for it even with your lives. Can you give us an exact amount, Mr. Scott? If there's any damage after the inspection, <laughs> the express, uh, I mean, the Skyfaring Commission will compensate you. The Skyfaring Commission. Yeah, they will compensate you, provided a detailed report of the damage is submitted. I don't doubt the financial strength of the Skyfaring Commission. However, this is not just about money. Besides, the cargo on this transport vessel belongs to the Intelligentsia Guild. If you want to inspect the cargo, shouldn't you at least call in a member of the Intelligentsia Guild to be present? Uh... I'm pretty tight with Dr. Ratio from the Intelligentsia Guild. Almost like family. Doesn't that make me practically a member of the Intelligentsia Guild, too? What's all this nonsense? Even if you were married okay. to him, you still couldn't represent the Intelligentsia Guild. Not what I expected to go to, but hey. We both need to follow the regulations, because that's how the IPC and the Cienjo operate, right? As an IPC worker, I have to abide by its regulations. If I make an exception and allow you to inspect the cargo, it'll spell disaster for me. Hmm. Or can Fane retreat? Uh huh. Your logic is too confusing for anyone to follow. Maybe you should learn the art of communication from a monkey before you continue spouting nonsense. <laughs> Everyone has their own set of rules. Now that you're on their turf, shouldn't you follow their rules too? We're well, like probably a good time to be yeah, honest. I get it. I know I'm on the Sienjo, but if I violate the IPC regulations, I'll be in deep trouble when I get back. Well, you guys sure know how to argue your case. Fine. I'll allow you to do the security inspection. It's just that uh, I need some time to sort things out. This is a big deal. Let me talk to headquarters first. So, Mr. Scott, are you just stalling for time and planning to leave the CN Joe as soon as your ship is repaired to avoid the Skyfaring Commission's inspection? Mm-hmm. Well, IPC staff are free to come and go, as long as they don't break any laws. Yeah, you've got some insight there. Who are you again? Who's that? Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Lingsha, Cauldron Master and Head of the Alchemy Commission on the Lawfu. Damn, she's really pretty. Look at her. She's extremely pretty. What the hell? Yeah, she's the new Cauldron Master assigned here from the Sienjo Juming. I received a report from the Artisanship Commission about cargo containing samples of unknown organisms. It said they needed help from the Alchemy Commission. I had nothing better to do, so I came myself. She reminds me of the signs of um, Nuba and the other. Uh, like the the the, the by now, yeah, uh, Nuba and Fuxi. 
wall with um not with hotel with four in on Gavik Third. He goes like totally into like their design. It's fine, Mr. Scott. If you really don't want your cargo to be inspected, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter? How can you say that? Why are you being so nice all of a sudden? Hmm? Well, since you're not going to check it, I'll take this crate and be on my way. Is that okay with everyone? Yeah, sure. Why should I object? Not only this sample, but all the goods on the transport ship are yours to keep. Like I said, we won't inspect them. Wait a minute! Well, that's more like it. If only the young displayed a more reasonable attitude, we could have sidestepped that altercation just now. Our ship will leave in a few days once the engines are repaired. Your ship can leave whenever you want, but I'm afraid I can't say the same for your cargo. According to the import and export regulation signed between the Sienjo and IPC, all biological shipments can only leave the port when they have confirmed to be of no threat, or when all biological activity expires. Since we can't determine if your shipment is safe for the environment, I guess we'll have to wait for its biological activity to expire. Let me check the previous cases. Normally, it'll only take around 47 star calendar years. <laughs> <laughs> only 47 years? Why so surprised? You're still young and full of energy. I'm pretty sure you'll live a few more decades have some confidence in yourself ha, okay i like her of a long life species your words are dripping with sarcasm while you may not care about time i do i'll be demanding double compensation from the skyfaring commission for every minute wasted oh you left her attitude already <laughs> sure thing mr scott you seem pretty confident that your career and life will last long enough to witness this victory unfold. Uh, step aside, guys. Let them do the inspection. Uh, but, Mr. Scott... Come on, we're already in enough trouble. Just let them do the security inspection. And if needed, I can always grovel before the Intelligentsia Guild later. I'm just using my head for what it's apparently good for, right? <laughs> well, honestly, at least you're not as annoying as that woman. <laughs> just get on with the inspection. Don't act all chummy with me now that you've got your way. This lady is really something else. Is this the IPC product? Uh, listen up! Any damages caused by inspections will be filed with the IPC! Turn it off! Interesting. Terror Crip? When an artist is infected with terror crypt, attack being the cast of mm -hmm. to can once can dispel terror crypt. And the cast of terror crypt is not affected mm -hmm. the fine to a terrified state and be unable to perform actions. Oh. Well, how unexpected. That was a surprise. There's more to life. Like fireflies, so everything burns to ashes! Existence is unity. This is more what sets in the sea, so please! Get that orb! Take your positions. Dreams do come true. I will claim victory for my fight to live! 
every petal all will be swept away by the wind. Stay put. Mm. Let's improvise. <clears throat> Oh, yeah, I was against some moon rage. Uh, okay. Swept away by the wind. I'm scared. Stay put. Mm, yeah, I should attack. Get that. Attack detected. Stay in step. I will fight to live. I don't think trying to shift the blame is a wise choice. Mm hmm. But seriously, I don't know why that thing suddenly started moving. I swear on the Amber Lord. Now we can blind like it all. Miss Shikwe, please escort our IPC guest to the Skyfaring Commission. I'm on it. Please follow me, Mr. Scott. Actually, it's already really annoyed about it. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, our preliminary inspection shows that there is indeed hidden biological tissues inside. Just like the craftsman feared. I can't even tell if it's ingenium or biological in nature. The core of this device is what they call wetware in industry slang. To put it simply, this machine operates with a kind of biological nerve as its control center. An interesting way to call it. I'll take some samples for the alchemist to analyze and figure out where the biological tissue comes from. Why would the Intelligentsia Guild use such unethical technology? Perhaps they're trying to create a new weapon? Whatever the reason is, it's probably why the Borison attacked the ship. No wonder the IPC were trying to obstruct our inspection. I'll contact the Ten Lords Commission and ask the judges to come and give their final verdict on this. According to our rules, all prisoners and weapons involving dangerous creatures must be taken to the Shackling Prison for further sentencing. After all, it's the safest place on the Lafu. As for you, Mr. Craftsman, please go with the Cloud Knights and explain the situation to the judge. After I open this process and go to way. I had a feeling that the IPC members would cause trouble, but I didn't think they'd be this tricky. Thanks for your help, Miss Linksha. I should thank you for saving my life. Your sword skills were impressive. Taking down that big guy. I thought the general's retainers were all burly martial masters. I didn't expect Yenching to be so. <laughs> Young, cute, miniature. <laughs> All of them are actually quite fit. Huh? <laughs> As for you, you must be the guests from the Astral Express, right? Saving the Lafu from that crisis. 
It's so impressive. <laughs> it wasn't a big deal. Really. It's still early. So why don't we get some tea at the Alchemy Commission? We can discuss your suggestions for revitalizing the Commission. Uh, I'd be happy to accept your invitation. And you three are coming too, right? I guess we go. Mm. Yeah, it is a several day. News is spreading pretty fast. All these years, and the view at the Alchemy Commission hasn't changed a bit. The tides come and go. But the ancient sea remains the same. For us, Vidyadara, there's nothing more nostalgic than our homeland. You're a Lofu native, Miss Lingsha? Yes. I grew up here. Listening to the sound of waves while researching prescriptions with my mentors and peers at the Alchemy Commission. It's kind of sad, isn't it? Everything changes, but somehow remains familiar. Just like you, Don Hung, I traveled far from home, and now I've returned. Seeing the familiar scenery brings back a hint of nostalgia. Uh, the view here would be even better without the Ambrosial Arbor. Oh, really? I think that towering tree looks pretty impressive. I agree with Lingsha there. Even if it's impressive, it's a plague mark. The Sien Zhou have been fighting abominations for thousands of years. And now that the Ambrosial Arbor has been reborn, it's only natural for everyone to feel uneasy. Well, once a seed is planted, no matter how long it takes, it'll eventually sprout and bear fruit. In my humble opinion, the rebirth of the Ambrosial Arbor and the resurgence of the disciples of Sanctus Medicus were inevitable. The seed was already planted, when the ancestors of the Sienjo sought immortality. I guess so. <laughs> My bad. Well, since you went through the entire Ambrosial Arbor crisis firsthand, Dan Hung and Lieutenant Yan Ching, I'd like to discuss something with you. What would you like to discuss, Miss Lingxia? I was lucky enough to be chosen by the Alliance to come in and clean up all the old grime in the Alchemy Commission. Honestly, the Alchemy Commission is riddled with problems and has reached a point where fixing it seems impossible. I'm looking to remedy this problem, but was wondering if you could provide any insights. Well... Even though I'm a Vidyadarin like you, I'm an outsider, just like my companions here. I can't really say much about a remedy, but I do have a piece of advice, Miss Lingxia. The Vidyadara and Alchemy Commission on the Lo Fu have always been intricately connected. If you cannot distance yourself from these ties, Miss Lingxia, Changing the situation within the Alchemy Commission may be quite challenging. <laughs> I may not know about politics, but I do know that the disciples of Sanctus Medicus have been operating within the Alchemy Commission for years. If you're determined to root them out, maybe you should discuss it with the General. I see. Thank you for your valuable insights. While the Lux Arrow from the Rainbow possesses unparalleled power to sever the Ambrosial Arbor, it can't sever mortals' desire to prolong their existence. Just like how the Cloud Knights can eliminate the remnants of the Disciples of St. Dismeticus, but are unable to calm the hearts and minds of the people within the Alchemy Commission. Our Sienjo forebears knew this well, and that's why they entrusted the duty of guarding the roots of the Arbor to the Vidyadara. However, the Vidyadara are still only mortal beings. Mm -hmm. Thirty years ago, 
My mentor served as Alchemy Commission's Cauldron Master. She recognized the emerging undercurrents and sought to cleanse the source of the disturbance. Unfortunately, even though she was skilled in the art of healing, she didn't understand the human heart or how to eliminate the sickness lurking within the depths of the Alchemy Commission. In the end, she was framed and exiled to the Juming. I was also implicated and had to leave the Lafu. And guess who arbitrated the case and handed down the sentence? None other than General Jing Yuan himself. Wh what? You heard it right. The ones responsible for the corruption in the Alchemy Commission are not just the remnants of the disciples of Sanctus Medicus, but even the Divine Foresight himself. Hmm. Alas. Why is your face turning pale, Yanqing? <sighs> Don't worry about it. I understand that when someone holds a position of power, they may sometimes have to make tough decisions. I won't hold any personal grudges against him. Besides, at our age, holding personal grudges is a luxury we can't afford. I'm guessing her master then is the woman that was mentioned. I already forgot the title. <laughs> Filling me. But yeah. Which had like those two Yao messengers address Jing Yuan for her. Lingsha, you're back! Ugh, I've been waiting ages for you! Yun Li! Why aren't you with your grandpa? What brings you to the Alchemy Commission? Well, let me take this opportunity to introduce you to Yan Qing. <sighs> what a small world. Mm -hmm. You! You stole my sword! Give it back! <laughs> I see. Let's skip the introduction part then. <laughs> <sighs> Why do I keep bumping into you? Are you stalking me or something? Of course not. Unlike you, Miss Yun Li, I have important things to take care of. You, on the other hand, seem to have all the time in the world to wander around without returning my sword. <laughs> Grandpa used to say that a sword reflects its master. I talked to your sword, and it told me that you've been distracted. You hesitate when you should strike, and you struggle to stay calm when your sword is unsheathed. Now that I see you again, I realize your sword was right. It wasn't me who took your sword. It was you who lost focus. I mean, you still took it. <laughs> Don't try to shift the blame here. Do you really expect me to believe that nonsense? I've been taking it easy on you because you're a guest from the Juming. But you're not taking the hint. Don't people from the Juming know you're supposed to return what you've borrowed? Just look at this flying sword. Even if I gave it back to you now, it'd just be taken away again in a few hours. You know the Cloud Knight saying, a Cloud Knight must never let slip their weapon. Yes? Well, sure, I can give it back to you now, but on the battlefield, that's a whole different story. <laughs> Poor flying sword. Kind of weird to not say to let him, him slip his weapon when his sword's all about flying around. But hey. Fine! You don't have to give it back because I'll take it back myself! Between these two, who do you think is tougher? Don't get me wrong, I'm just curious. <sighs> Get ready to separate them. When it comes to uh, toughness, per se, I would say you need. When you strictly talk about toughness, it is. It is my first day at the Alchemy Commission. A brawl is definitely not how I imagine celebrating it. <laughs> well, since you don't approve, I won't draw my sword here. 
I didn't mean it in that way. Since you've already drawn your swords, you'd be disappointed if you didn't get to test one another, right? I've received reports that the Delves near the Alchemy Commission are still infested with abominations. Seems like my predecessors left quite a mess. So, if you two want to determine who's better, why not focus on them instead of each other? Hmm. Clearing out some abominations? Eh. Sounds boring. It's the Cloud Knight's duty to eliminate those abominations. You don't have to ask me twice, Miss Lingsha. I'll help you get rid of them. Oh, you think you're the only one who knows how to behave? If Lingsha needs anything, I'll gladly draw my sword and help her out. It's so heartwarming to see both of you being so sweet and caring. So then, shall we get going? Alright, I guess we're gonna do some kind of dungeon, alright? Guess I guess what we we'll do. Ever be. since the disciples of Sanctus Medicus were eradicated, their experimental abominations have been festering here. If you want a contest, I'll be the referee. The one who kills the most abominations within an hour wins. <sighs> Ling Sha, as always. You're still an expert in making unpaid work sound so noble and grand. <laughs> it's for your own good, little Yunli. While you desire to compete against each other, I don't want to see either of you getting hurt. That's really thoughtful of you, Cauldron Master. So, are you both ready? Oh, I actually have to play with Anishi. Uh, let's put a party around him then. I'm just not sure what his skills actually are. Uh, skill, you don't see the six, four times, crit rate, uh -huh. Okay, it's all about crit. Rise. <laughs> mm. And Ow. primarily single target. Uh. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I can deal with that. I can deal with that. Because mm. you can go with super break for him too. In that case. Or oh, come on. Are you gonna go I appreciate now? the help of the Astral Express. Then we can go Don't forward. worry. I'll always be with you. Sure. Your martial prowess exceeds that of the general. While Ugh. Looks like my predecessors left quite a mess. Let me say it again. The one who kills the most abominations within an hour wins. Be careful when you draw your swords and make sure you don't hurt each other. <laughs> Can we start now, Lingsha? I hope for an end to strife in the world. I'll take the defeat of any first. Ah! Press and meet all together. I see through you. Converge and awaken. Ah. Time for sword play. <laughs> You'll pay for this. Lend me your strength. Strike with heart. <laughs> I didn't expect someone who can't even hold on to a sword to actually have some skill. <laughs> okay, I'm really going for it, but you're not striking where it counts. <laughs> it's such a shame to see you misuse your sword like that. Trouble. So, we've entered the storm to guard and defend, crush them. May song bring us victory, harmony and unity.
Lend me your strength. I'm probably cheering on for us. <laughs> She's actually run for like everyone, isn't she? I hope for an end to strife in the world. Press and all together. How many can you block? Night. Stars echo. I'm gonna push your ride. <laughs> You'll pay for this. Time for sword play. Strike the fight like this. We've entered the storm. To guard and defend, crush them. Lucky. Why don't you just give me back my sword, sincerely apologize, and then go cry your eyes out to your grandpa? <sighs> oh, why are they both acting like kids? I mean, they are, but still. They are both not good at probably dealing with this. Consider yourself lucky that I'm not interested in your rusty sword, as I don't have the nasty habit of snatching other people's weapons. All you did was chop down a few monsters. Don't get carried away with yourself. If you think you can just take this sword from my hand, go ahead and try. To me, it looks like our uh, uh, thing would have the advantage, but I guess not. <laughs> nice. 
nice. <laughs> well fought, my young friends. However, both of you have shortcomings. One of you focuses on dodging and weaving, while the other relies on brute strength, trying to take down targets with a single strike. I really like her as well. Who are you? Me. I am just a patient seeking medicine from the Alchemy Commission. A passerby, if you will. I thought I'd see my fill of impressive fights during the war dance. Yet here I am, able to witness a remarkable fight at the Alchemy Commission, of all places. Well, the Lafu is never short of surprises. <laughs> However, I have a small suggestion for you. Why don't you settle this dispute fair and square in the war dances ring? That way, you can resolve your differences with a proper duel and put your grudges behind you. Grudges? Uh, no, not at all. Yunli and I, we were just sparring. Mm. <laughs> sparring? You summoned your flying swords and she swung her sword with full strength. No grudges between you. Mm, <laughs> yeah, it's better lying. Aha! What brings you here, Lady Feishao? Have you finished your health consultation with the Dragon Lady? Fe Feishao? Grandpa always talks about you. Could it be that you're... The Merlin's Claw of the Xianzhou Yao Ching? Hmm. Looks like I'm quite famous on the Sanjo Lafu, too. Of course, everyone has heard of the great general. Known to all, and unbeknown to none. Great general? Isn't that title a bit too narcissistic? Mm, I don't like it. <laughs> Ooh, I heard there's a dozing general on the Lafu. So I came up with a humble nickname for myself. The lacking general. Lacking in worries, regrets, and rivals. I don't think he is wor uh, has worries. Uh, is lacking in worries and regrets with like a lot of stuff that has been happened to him, but I guess he is a bit lacking on the rivals part, maybe. Sounds much better, right? <laughs> Yeah, that's a befitting title that sounds both humble and impressive. Now that the sparring session is over, Yanqing and Yunli, shouldn't you politely thank General Fei Xiao for her guidance and bury the hatchet? Uh, here's your sword. Keep it safe. Or it might get taken away again. <laughs> By the way, we haven't settled the score yet. I'll defeat you fair and square next time we fight. Is how she apologizes <sighs> now that I finally got my sword back I should report to the seat of divine foresight I'll take my leave general we shall oh by the way miss Lingsha, if you've got some free time I'd like to invite you to the seat of divine foresight for a chat with general Jing Yuan I think there's more to those personal grudges you mentioned earlier. Thanks for stepping in, General Feishao. Otherwise, I'd have had to knock them out with my incense. <laughs> Not at all. Just doing what you asked. How about we call it even as payment for the healer lady's consultation? Sorry, but even a general needs to pay their bills. We don't do credit here. And let's not forget, you'd have been waiting decades for a chance to see the Dragon Lady if it weren't for me. Well, you can always send the bill to the Seat of Divine Foresight and say it's for mentoring those kids. After all, it was quite the effort splitting them up. I nearly had to get tough. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I need to find a spot and get some fresh air. Good. I'm on 8 of Fish, I already walks to the seaside. 
Uh, I'm guessing they've been talking about Bailu. Back already? You've met with Jing Yuan and wandered around for a few hours. So, what do you think? It appears that the Divine Foresight is using this war dance as a show of strength to convince everyone that the La Fu is prospering after the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis. But... I know you're going to say but, right? But... The influx of people attending the war dance is like a breeding ground for disorder and rumors. One wrong move, and the Lawfu could be in a world of chaos. The Cloud Knights on the streets remain vigilant, so at the very least, General Jing Yuan is aware of this. As for other matters, I'm unable to say. I'd prefer to be excused from future meetings with generals. I'm just a military healer. And now, all of a sudden, I'm thrust onto the center stage, having cordial chats with two generals? <laughs> My work doesn't lend itself to being in the limelight, either. Just stop whining. At least you're in one piece, right? Before getting in touch with General Jing Yuan, I wanted to put aside my assumptions and see his momentum. That includes the overall bearing of the Cloud Knights on the street, what people are saying, and how those close to him behave. The might of an army dwells not within its pawns, but within the force of its collective momentum. Recognizing this fact reveals the true measure of power. <laughs> Thanks for enlightening me, General. A perfectly clear statement turned confusing thanks to your translation. <laughs> <sighs> You've made me lose where I was now. Anyway, <laughs> this is how I operate in battle, so you might as well get used to it. Are you treating General Jingyuan as your enemy? I mean, she obviously does. The longest serving general of the Xianzhou Lawfu. Do you think he'd have only a few enemies? By the way, General. You met the healer lady, yes? Could you show me the medicine she prescribed you? Well, the healer lady couldn't do anything about my condition. She just told me to enjoy some tasty food. <sighs> so not even the famed healer lady could help? <sighs> Don't worry. I'll fulfill my promise and find a way to cure you. Actually, I've found some leads. Well, life and death, Zhao Cho. It's all predetermined. Upon starting my military career, I made a pledge that the rest of my life would be dedicated to being the Xianzhou's spearhead, hunting down the abominations of abundance till the end of my days. Hmm. As long as I can fulfill that deep-seated desire, I don't care how long I live. You asked if I view General Xin Yuan as my enemy. No. My real enemy has always been myself. Enjoy some tasty food. So, what's for dinner tonight? <laughs> Good question. Jeez. You really know how to read the room, don't you? You guys figure it out for yourselves. I'm due to catch up with an old war friend I've not seen for quite a long time. Meanwhile, in Jing and Tom will return to the exotic something. Hey! Was that the Yao Qing general who just dropped in out of nowhere? Oh, she's so awesome! He seems really cool, I'm not gonna I mean, lie. When Yun Li swung that massive sword, she just casually blocked her attack with ease. But all of the fox sins easily get a bonus for me. And we draw that too. I do love dragons too. <laughs> <sighs> Mine too. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. But to go up against Yun Li is quite impressive, you know? 
That aura of heroism and grace. It almost makes me want to learn Sanjo swordplay. Well, about that, there's a ribbon for that. <laughs> you think so too, right? Uh... Mm, I agree. General Fei Xiao is indeed impressive. Yep, she is. Well, I was actually hoping you'd give Yan Ching some praise. Nah. Yeah, he didn't deserve it. Honestly, he didn't deserve it. I mean, he, he has good skills, yeah, but the way he acted up there totally was not adequate to his position. Thanks for the kind words, Miss March. The war dance is coming up, and I've been chosen to represent the Cloud Knights in the ceremony. I've had my fair share of defeats lately, and even though I know there are always more skilled swordmasters out there, seeing General Fei Xiao's skills today has made me feel a bit uneasy again. Don't underestimate yourself. After all, generals won't fight in the ring during the war dance. Just remember the state of mind you had when you single-handedly took on me and Blade, putting life and death aside. With that mindset, you can prevail against most challengers. I see. Thanks for the advice, Master Don Hung. By the way, now that today's events are over, General Jing Yuan wants to invite all of you to the Seat of Divine Foresight. He has something important to discuss. Okay. I bet it's about how to deal with the generals from the Yao Qing and the Ju Ming. Probably. I really don't want to get caught up in grown-up games so soon. I just hope Generals Fei Xiao and Hui An can see the truth. We don't need any more chaos on the La Fu before the war dance. It always already has been like a lot of potential for trouble brewing, though. Like a lot. With the IPC, those wolf monsters, those two generals. Uh, this is all already spelling out trouble, like in caps lock. Would you like me to relay your message? So I should double check this area in case there's something like new scrolls or treasures just here. I haven't been here in a while since like mode of update. Earlier at the Palace of Astrum, I introduced these guests from the Astral Express to you, Elder Huai. But with all the people around, we only exchanged pleasantries. Now I'd like to officially introduce them to you. These three braved great dangers, accompanying me to perilous places, defeating the chief culprit Vantilia, and uncovering the conspiracies of the disciples of Sanctus Medicus. If you wish to know more, please feel free to ask us. Well, I skimmed through the reports about the Arbor's rebirth from the master diviner Hu Xuim. She's been summoned to the Yu Chue for questioning. There are a lot of doubts within the Alliance about this whole situation. But despite all that, I believe in you. Since you joined the ranks, you have repeatedly achieved remarkable feats. After the High Cloud Quintet each went their separate ways, despite the many criticisms within the Alliance, the Marshal still stood firm against the dissenting voices and entrusted the Lawfu to you. Over the years, you've served the Alliance with loyalty and wisdom. You've taken down abominations in Velasa, rescued the Xianzhou Yuchui from a siege, and destroyed the demonic planet summoned by the denizens of abundance. I still remember those battles vividly. There are fools who doubt your loyalty. They're happy to see the divine foresight fail because it gives them some kind of sick satisfaction. <laughs> they haven't achieved anything of their own, so they feed off the failures of others. But I've seen enough failures in my time. 
And I want to believe that your loyalty has never wavered. So, General Fei Xiao of the Yao Qing is the only one investigating the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis on behalf of the Alliance? <sighs> no, no. I am too. This old man's words always catch me off guard. <laughs> the Marshal ordered me to come to this Yenzhou Lawful. But the document only says, attend the war dance and listen to Fei Shao's questioning. No need for that. You're all important witnesses. The Marshal is well aware of Jing Yuen's purpose in holding the ceremony, and understands the situation he is facing. She mentioned it because she believes both issues are important. Thanks for your kindness and sincerity, Elder Huayan. But is it appropriate to tell everyone here about the Marshal's orders? By introducing the Express's witnesses to me alone, aren't you aiming to discern the intentions behind both my actions <laughs> and Fei Shao's? And whether there's any discord between us? Well, since I'm being open and honest with you, I encourage you young folk to do the same. All right. As for I the like Ambrosial him. Arbor Crisis, all I need to do is listen. General Fei Shao will be the one asking the questions. To be honest, I'm more concerned about the timely start of the war dance. <laughs> oh, by the way, I've prepared a gift for the war dance. Oh, what are we getting? I don't really like this dude. He's true. So many I haven't picked up yet. Can you, like, why is he not collecting him? Oh, thank you for the follow. Quite appreciate it. It does sound more like a board medicine considering you're just following right now. Yes, it's this case right here. This case claims with a muted luster, crafted from a material neither wood nor metal. Its surface is masterfully woven with metallic threads, outlining an intricate pattern of lotus flowers. There will be numerous contests and celebrations during the war dance, and the main event will be the ringmaster's challenge. The host will dispatch a skilled warrior to take on challengers from all over the cosmos, showcasing the excellent martial arts of the Sienjo Lawfu. When you mentioned that the Astral Express would be attending the ceremony, I thought the High Elder of the Lawfu would be the ringmaster. <laughs> you humor me, Elder Huayan. The healer lady is just a young lady who knows nothing about martial arts. How can I assign her as the ringmaster? That would be weird, yeah. <laughs> I'm no match to you when it comes to joking. What's this box for? Why don't you open it, General Huayan? This sword case is intended for the war dance's award. It's empty now, but in a few days, a precious sword will be delivered and stored inside. I don't mean to boast about our skills, but this sword represents the pinnacle of the Ju Ming's craftsmanship. It has a legendary history, full of heroic tales from foreign lands. Tales that are too detailed to be summarized in just a few words. Since the delegation delivering the sword hasn't arrived yet, I'll just leave the case here for now. Okay. I've been wondering... Who would be worthy of such a sword? And then it hit me. I can award it to the champion of the Ringmaster's Challenge. The ceremony's champion is sure to be a perfect match for the sword. Moreover, I hear that Yen Xing is an excellent swordmaster, and that he will be representing the Lawfu as the Ringmaster. 
So it seems like a perfect gift for him. Thank you for your generosity, Elder Hwayan. If you want to give me a sword, just say the word, Grandpa. No need to beat around the bush. She has come confidence, at least. You've got confidence, my girl. But I don't think you can best Yin Jing. Ooh. I know you're all about swords, Miss Yun Li. It's just a shame that it's the sword that ultimately chooses its rightful master. Yeah. And even if someone gets their hands on such a precious sword, it'll probably end up in someone else's. The outcome of our duel at the Alchemy Commission is still up in the air. Since you're interested, why don't you represent the Xianzhou Juming and challenge me in the ring? That's exactly what I had in mind. Nobody knows who's gonna come out on top. It could be me, could be someone else. It'll probably be me. But whatever happens, it won't be him. It will probably be us. <laughs> Not to be rude or anything. We've been watching their drama. I'm dying to find out who beats who. I'm just more annoyed Quiet over down. it. We have other guests here. I've prepared this sword to add some excitement to the ceremony, not to have you two squabble. It's not a good look for the Alliance. <laughs> While you both seem confident that you'll win, you need to remember there can only be one winner and one loser in the ring. Which could lead to hard feelings. Actually, I have an idea. We don't know who the winner will be, and it might not be either of you. But if you're eyeing that prize, you'll need to work together. I want you to take on an apprentice who will take part in the war dance and win at least one match. Well, guess who will that be? <laughs> How does that make sense? In my humble opinion, while a cloud knight is commendable by securing victories, it's even more so to pass on your skills and spread the way of swordplay. Thanks for the follow, Fulvistar. Very appreciated. I'd be greatly pleased if this apprentice could represent the Express in the war dance by displaying their cloud knight flair and prowess. Well, Elder Huayan's idea is quite interesting. Imparting swordplay skills requires teamwork, and both the winner and the loser will learn a valuable lesson regardless of the outcome. The question is, whom should the two of them take as an apprentice? I find it so interesting that Marsh of all people will be the apprentice. <laughs> kind of weird thing, but hey. <laughs> I noticed just now that Miss March seemed quite interested in the outcome of your sword fight. So I thought, why not teach her the art of sword play? Uh, oh, wait. Are you serious, General? Yep, you are. Why am I being dragged into this all of a sudden? I've never practiced sword play before. I'm a total newbie. You really think I can learn it? Well, you'll probably realize I have no hope and give up on me. That'd be so embarrassing. <sighs> don't give up already. Why don't you choose me now? <laughs> <laughs> Your talent is quite unique. Are you also interested in sword play? Well, duh, I am. But you know, based on my years of judging people, you don't really need to dive into sword play to boost your skills. And I doubt there's anyone out there who can really show you the way forward. As for Miss March, she's like a piece of jade in the rough, just waiting to be shaped. Yeah, we're already being being shaped by the gazes of the year and it's more than enough, I guess. I do wonder when will do do we get a, a sword trailblazer at one point, like a sword fighting trailblazer though. <laughs> I appreciate your kind words, General Huayan. But won't teaching me swordplay be a waste of Yanqing and Yunli's time? They should be preparing for the ceremony. Plus, I heard that each swordmaster has their own special moves. What if they let something slip while teaching me? 
If everyone knows each other's tactics, won't that make it hard to catch people off guard during the war dance? Would make it for an even more exciting battle though in the end. So, I don't see any issues with it. That's considerate of you, March 7th. But don't worry. It'll take you at least a decade of hard training before you can even start learning special moves. No need to freak out. A few Jooming swordplay tricks will mean you'll be more than equipped. Uh, really? Looks like March's curiosity has been piqued. <laughs> <laughs> the whole point is to know each other's moves. Defeating your opponent in just one move? Hey, there's a fear. Would that be? Welcome to chat. Plus, what really decides a swordsman's fate isn't some special move. It's the solid <laughs> fundamentals. Hello to you as well, Maria. So Miss Yunli has already agreed. What do you say, Yang Ching? General, I I haven't graduated yet. How can I be qualified to teach swordplay to others? <laughs> so you're admitting your defeat, huh? If you're not even competent to teach, why don't you let me be the ringmaster instead? <laughs> Yang Ching. Teaching an apprentice is also a way of honing your own skills and gaining insights. You've been an apprentice for years. It's about time you looked at swordplay from another perspective. Greg, you're teaching your own dad, though. General. Then count me in. Yang Ching could definitely. Now that Yang Ching has agreed too, it all comes down to Miss March giving her nod. <sighs> it's up to you to make the final decision, March. <laughs> Time for you to become the best soldier. At least that way, I won't have to worry about you accidentally shooting me in the butt all the time. <laughs> hey, I never <laughs> missed my target. <laughs> okay, that was a good comment from us. <laughs> and I'm doing good. Thank you. How about you? Then I'm on board. Thank you for your kindness, General Huayan. Great. Starting tomorrow, Yen Ching and Yun Li will teach you the basics of the Cloud Knight's swordplay. Yun Li and I will head out and purchase some sword practice equipment for Miss March. Think of it as a little initiation gift. <laughs> you're too kind. Oh, wait, you're giving me a gift? Shouldn't it be the other way around? Mm -mm -mm. That's pretty uh, General Huayan's gone. Wait, why does something feel off about what we talked about? <laughs> well, you will see, I guess. Uh, I think we strayed off topic. How did things even get to this point? Yeah, I brought you here because the General said he had some important matters to discuss. But how in the world... Did you and Lee and I suddenly become Miss March's swordplay mentors? <laughs> because <laughs> really to up General Hua Yan wants us to stick around on the Law Fu for some time. Oh, true. Yeah, it's also an excuse for, uh, to, for for keeping us here, definitely. But from his point of view, we're no different from all the other tourists who may leave at any time. Since the crew's actions were mentioned in the Lofu's operations log were given to the Alliance, he probably wants to see firsthand if we're as capable as to report claims, or if we're just some made-up excuse to save face. And he wants to see it for himself during the war dance, which is why he even dragged Yun Li into this. What began as a simple contest between two sword masters has... <laughs> now evolved into you two collaborating to mentor March. Helder Huayan is still that tricky general who likes to give everyone a headache. <laughs> He's cool, though. My apologies. Truth be told, I invited all of you to the ceremony because I wished for you to act as my witnesses. We figured as much. Now I apologize for not disclosing this information earlier. In the coming weeks, I'll also invite all of you to a meeting with General Fei Xiao, where you may need to answer her questions and clear up any doubts she might have. So please, be prepared for the meeting. 
Will it also be like another negotiation mini game we had with Scott earlier? Don't worry, General. No matter what happens, I'm prepared to stay here as the Express's witness and answer any questions. <sighs> Thank you, everyone. General, I know there isn't much I can do to share your burden, but... Hmm? As the Lawfu Ringmaster, I won't let anyone defeat me in the war dance. <laughs> I know. No, Mary Fisher meets old comedy in arms who she has the illustrious years. Merlin's claw waiting for me, and for so long too. It's quite an honor. It's been a while, General Fischau. Well, I'm not surprised that it was you, Colonel. I'm guessing my yeah. I think the war like 30 years ago coincides with that what you call most past wars about. I just forgot the time scale of her uh, like losing her comrade. It's been 30 years since we last saw each other, right, Yuko? Yes, back then you were the vanguard of the Yao Qing's verdant knights, and I was a pilot of the La Fu's rainbow orbit fleet. Who would have thought that upon meeting again, you'd be a general, and I'd have given up flying? It really does feel like a lifetime ago. Well, I wouldn't say I haven't seen you in 30 years. After all, your great victories are announced through the Yellow Bell Resonance System every day. So I'm well aware of your great feats. How's your health holding up? <laughs> Still stable, I suppose. Do you still remember the medic who saved me in battle? That healer with the odd name and peculiar temperament. What was his name again? Was it Pichu? Or Katyo? <laughs> Jiaocho. He's been my retainer and personal healer, delegated by the Alchemy Commission from the Xianzhou Yaoqing. Over the years, he's dedicated himself to managing my condition. It's thanks to him that I'm still in good health today. What is her condition, though? They're always talking like about her being sick, but we don't even know what it is. At least I don't. Are we supposed to know already, or have I just missed it? Given my background, I'm happy to have made it this far. I'm relieved to know that you're safe and sound. Well then, since you and Elder Hua Yen are here, I imagine you must have received orders from the Marshal? As your friend, may I ask how the Alliance intends to punish the General of the Lawfu? The Arbor's rebirth has frightened the Elders who lurk behind the scenes. They fear the resurgence of abominations, much like what happened 30 years ago. Hmm. Although the reports from the Lawfu explained all the details, we don't know if the Ruin Legion really invaded. Or how exactly the Stellaron Hunters and the Astral Express became involved. This puzzle has many missing pieces. Thank you. Did you like it? <laughs> As you know, the fugitive Jing Liu, who mysteriously disappeared many years ago, has resurfaced. This time, she has brought along an outworlder and a coffin claiming to offer the Marshal a method to fight against the Eons. The Law Fu Preceptor has also leveled accusations against Jing Yuan for neglecting the Alliance's principles. She asserts that Jing Yuan enabled the exiled Imbibitor Lune to re-enter the Law Fu, thereby unlocking the Lunarescent Deaths within Scale Gorge Waterscape, which in turn disrupted the Vidyatara's dutiful watch over the Ambrosial Arbor. Mm -hmm. Politics. <laughs> Thank you. A kind of combination of thought of myself, though I did not draw the model myself, but yeah. It was part of the initial idea. And I still have more ideas for potential, like, new models in the future. 
It is for these reasons that I have come here to the Law Fu today. Well, duty calls. Perhaps I shouldn't have mentioned all of this to an uninvolved person, but since we once fought together, I didn't want to keep you in the dark. Perhaps pretending you didn't hear any of this would be for the best. <laughs> I understand. I'm sorry. I was out of line. I know I shouldn't be defending General Jing Yuan right now, but... Well, you know how I am. The Law Fu has enjoyed centuries of stability since the end of the sedition of Imbibitor Lunay, much of which can be attributed to General Jing Yuan's masterful strategizing. Unfortunately, for long life species, enduring through the ages always culminates in a failure that undoes all previous achievements, a moment that our adversaries relish. That's true. And that's why I'm also here for another purpose. To visit Hule. Who is Hule again? Oh, who is that now? I'm not, not sure if we actually have met him before or heard about him before. Hule? You mean that Hule? The Boris in Warhead? Yeah, we have the met him before. The same Hule who has been imprisoned in the Shackling prison for over seven centuries? The nemesis of the Foxians who will never be forgiven and shall be imprisoned until the end of the cosmos. I can't quite remember the exact wording, but yes, the very same Hule. <laughs> I mean, you really like that model that much. Always oh, nice to hear. Usually, only emissaries from the Xianzhou Yao Qing Skyfaring Commission visit him once every century. Why do you have to visit him now, of all times? The Foxians and the Alliance made a pact to combat the abominations, aiming to achieve justice and free their kin. That werewolf monster is to be forever imprisoned in the dark recesses of the Shackling prison, facing unending retribution. Given the situation on the Law Fu, those on the Yao Qing are concerned about Hule's imprisonment. I'm afraid that the routine visit every century is no longer sufficient to ease their concerns. Understandably, That's okay. why I was sent here, to reassure them. <sighs> It's all bad news. Well, not everything. There might be a silver lining. Oh, by the way, I found some clues about the thing you asked for. Huh. Tell me more. The Verdant Knights followed the route you mentioned and discovered the wreckage of the Whistling Flame ship. Unfortunately, there were no survivors and no cargo. <sighs> However, someone had already been on the scene before we arrived. Our people? Or someone from the IPC? No, neither. Yu Kong, have you heard of a person named Ron May? Well, why Ron May of all people? <laughs> this is getting convoluted. <laughs> Why around me in specific? On a day of running around, you finally arrived at the Patriarch Inn for a well deserved rest. This night, you arrested this from meeting the general in a busting crowd before the war dance keeps you from falling asleep. Day two. <laughs> I'm still feeling sleepy. Did I oversleep? Where did March and Donham go? Good question. Oh, they're right over here. Also, give me the book. There you are. <laughs> uh, it's on the princess's door. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a promise to General Huayan, after all. I woke up especially early, so I can start teaching Miss March swordplay. Hey, why are you blushing, Master Yanqing? <laughs> this is, uh, the first time someone has called me Master. I need to, uh, 
Get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> Let me make it clear. Swordplay training is about improving your body, mind, and strength. It's not a casual game you can master overnight. I promised General Huayan that I'd teach you Cloud Knight swordplay, so you can participate in the war dance and defeat at least one opponent. I'll do my best, but if you break your master's rules... Is March always a good girl, though? Well, I guess Fine. I'm her. A promise is a promise. Since I promised to study hard, I'll do my best starting today. Great! <laughs> That's the spirit. Treaty's always has good March is in your hands now, Yen Ching. Don't be too easy on her. <laughs> Don Hung, do you even have a heart? Did you lose it somewhere? Oh, no, he has it at the right place, I would say. <laughs> Where's Yun Li? I've found a quiet spot in the back garden of the Palace of Astrum for our first lesson together. What's up, race to you and Dan Hang? Embarking on the first lesson of the apprentice ship, I guess. Seriously? It's the first day, and you two are already late? Why is everyone on the Lafu so laid back? So disappointing. Uh, uh, Master Yun Li, you're already here. Uh, sorry for keeping you waiting. Oh, wait. Were you trying to teach her in secret? <laughs> That's sneaky. You didn't even do anything yet. <laughs> I'm just showing you what Lafu etiquette is all about. She might be my apprentice, but it's customary for the master to personally escort their apprentice to the place of learning. As the host, I'll be teaching Miss March the essence of Lafu swordplay, after which she'll emerge victorious in the war dance ring. You won't be complaining about Lafu swordplay then. Stand aside, rookie. Let me show you how we Ju Ming sword masters treat their apprentices. Quickly. Over here, Miss March. This is a reverse mentorship gift from me to you. I hope you put it to good use. Oh, this will be a new outfit, I guess. What's this? Sienjo clothing? It's so beautiful! Sword practice requires precise movements. This outfit is tailored to fit perfectly and allows for smooth movements. I even added some small accessories. I put a lot of thought into it. Now the question is, where did you get March's measurements from? You just met her yesterday. <laughs> so how could you perfect, like, tailor a perfect fit for March without knowing her measurements? <laughs> How can you compete with me? I'll teach March 7th the essence of Juming swordplay so oh, she can win the contest video. with my sword skills. Actually, I've prepared something too. Huh? You have a gift for me too, Master Yenqing? Since you want to learn swordplay, Miss March, you'll need suitable weapons. So. I went out of my way to prepare a pair of swords overnight. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to ask the craftsmen to customize the swords for you. But I did my best to choose ones that look nice and are suitable for a beginner. I hope you like them, Miss March. I mean... In some situations, this game is really fire. In others, really funny. In very different ones, very confusing. But hey... And I guess my game is pretty, even though I, well, didn't make it. <laughs> but yes, Augusta Ray is pretty. That definitely is true. Oh, thank you, Master Yenqing! <laughs> Bet you didn't see that one coming, did you, Yun Li? Well, thank you for the follow, Mr. Black Zero. <laughs> the real competition? Is just getting started. And also welcome to the chat. I don't say that yet. I'm so lucky to have two great masters. But why does it feel like things are getting a bit weird?
scared. They have been weird from the very start, March. Why are you questioning it only now? <laughs> Ooh, I really like the outfit. So what do you think, Masters? Does this outfit suit me? It definitely does. Perfect. I chose it carefully. It's perfect for beautiful young swordswomen like you and me. Ahem. <clears throat> All right. Let's get started with the training. The person next to me is a Cloud Knight instructor I've brought in. For your first lesson, try exchanging a couple of moves with him. Would this be uh, a tutorial? Wait. We're having actual combat training for the first lesson? Isn't that a bit too intense? <laughs> well, I heard you have some experience with archery and martial arts. The first thing we're going to do is see just how strong your fundamentals are. Come on. Step forward and strike with the sword in the most natural way you can think of. It's important for us to grasp your natural movements so we can decide where to start and what you need to learn. If you're ready, let's begin. Try it by fire, I guess. Uh, <laughs> okay. All right. Are you ready? Sure. Uh, yeah, I'm ready. But please go easy on me. Then I apologize in advance, Miss March. <laughs> wow. Ready to shine. Uh, is there any experience with the sword? Why don't you use your skill first? I think she should teach me something. Please have some team. Pay hey, close people. attention, Miss March. Okay, she was kind of play is all about being swift and agile in your movements. With powerful abilities. Okay. Is she like a follow-up character then? Let me just actually like actually probably check the skills. Thank you very much. I don't like it being a top bit by bit. Um uh, okay, one point of charge, okay. Uh, Single ally become chief who will use this I have any text. Uh, erudition, destruction, and the hunt. Ah, toughness reduction for okay. Nice plot. Uh, increases the hits per action and damage chance. Okay, it's an attack ultimate. In charge. Action. Yeah, okay, so I'm just a follow up attack, I guess. Okay. Strike with heart. <laughs> right on time. Practice is over. Swords descend. <laughs> Ignore him. Strength is everything. Like this? Well done. Mm. Yes, you! Time for sword play! I could take ten of you! Just a sec. One time enemy! Melt! Alright, she has a ton of stuff. Right. I'm starting to get the hang of it! Wait, no, yeah, okay. I think I wasted you for sure, but hey. Blade is fire! <laughs> Mountains fall! Awesome! Ooh. Oh, yeah, follow up doesn't like automatically trigger. Interesting. Just mind. Here I come! Right on time. Time to show you what I can real. Azure Dragon, White Tiger, Less Card, Watch this! What is it? Ultimate animation. <laughs> What was that ultimate animation? <laughs> wow. I did not expect that. Practice is over. Swords descend. <laughs> no. Strike with heart. You'll make good practice. Here you go, master. Leave through clouds. Right on time. Oh, I get it. All right, check out Sprite. this move. <sighs> I didn't expect the first lesson. 
seem to be so intense. Miss March has quick hands and a flexible body. She's a perfect fit for practicing law through swordplay. Jenna isn't like an interesting kid, Boris. However, she lacks strength, and her strikes were a bit unfocused. But don't worry, that's totally normal for beginners. Once she starts practicing Jooming swordplay, she'll make heaps of progress. Given the situation, I believe Miss March should start by working on her strength. <laughs> Seriously. Well. Wow. Do you actually know anything about swordplay or what? Well, in your case, you're all about strength, really. I feel like it would not be the best to teach techniques, at least at the start. I could ask you the same thing. Dual swords require agility. So what's more important than footwork? Instead of focusing on her strengths, we should address her weaknesses. The drawback of wielding two swords is not generating enough force. What good is being quick on your feet if you don't have strength? It's not like we're dancing here. Well... The speed you have also equates at least two parts of the strength you impart on your enemies when you hit them, so... I'm all with uh, Yangxing here. Skilled swordmasters know how to play to their strengths and work on their weaknesses. Start with what you're good at, then tackle your weaknesses. That's the right way to learn. <laughs> you're quite the theorist, huh? Theorist? I, you claim to be able to talk to swords. So what does that make you? A lunatic? Uh, hey, it's only my first lesson, and you're already arguing. Uh, come on, calm down, masters. I'll have to improve both my footwork and strength anyway, so it doesn't matter which one comes first. <laughs> but it does matter. Just, Just listen, listen to, to me, me March 7th. Aww. Poor her. <laughs> Let's begin the journey of March 7th's sword training. Good luck. You will need it. <laughs> At least with these two wrist masters, yeah. Oh, she's actually like having it as like as a path switch. Interesting. Okay. I mean, I haven't built her with light cones and anything yet anyway, so... Uh, I'm a record. I mean, she's level 80. She starts with it, but maybe required to, to give her some stuff, I guess. Uh, what can I give her for light like, counts? Mm, I guess we're creative to fuel. Uh, Considering we're playing with you and Lee who takes Acra, maybe? Mm. Take skill, deals more damage, if I can reverse coming change. I feel like actually this might be fitting for her, which I actually have currently on. Sure. I haven't even built her uh, Zushang yet, so. Let's give it to my, uh, March 7. Um, let's do some. You can basic. never have enough skills. Let's train some more. Leveling some talents. Why do I have the. Advanced material, but not the basic one. Yeah, why do I have like the easy tier 2 bullets? Not even sure where I got them from. Uh, you can never have enough skills. 
Let's train some more. Just get the basic ones out of the way. I guess I must have gotten them from some kind of event. I'm not sure which though. Uh, yeah, this should be fine for now. Uh, 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 uh. Also, wait, since she's actually automatically pushed to level 80. Yeah. Wait, no, I uh, no, I had her level 2, level 80 before. She's not automatically pushed. Um, who would you recommend it? I'm guessing it wouldn't be too bad for her. Uh, since uh, actually, since I already had some level of level of these, okay, sure. Why not? Uh huh. Wait, I have no speed boots for my sealer? Interesting. Hmm. Where do I want it? Oops. That's not where I want it. Uh, give me... I mean, I can just use the story one, but... Um, we're gonna use so with... Follow party would be good as for this, not gonna lie. Okay. Done. Went to ring. <laughs> Same project again? Oh, with you here, I've got nothing to worry about. And then. We're gonna use for support. I think Tingyu wouldn't be so stupid for this. Dear Himeko, Mr. Yang, and Pom Pom, we're all good here on the Sianjo La Fu, so no need to worry. By the way, how's your trip going? <laughs> Why's she writing a letter now? As for me, I've somehow become the apprentice to two Cloud Knight Sword Masters. And I've been honing my sword skills with their guidance. Also, like Unilee's expression here in the background. <laughs> <laughs> One of them is Yen Ching, the boy we've all met before. <laughs> the other is Yun Li, the granddaughter of General Hua Yen from the Xianzhou Ju Ming. Both masters are super strict, giving me a real taste of how hard sword training can be. I tried to drag him into this, but he refused. Then I tried to rope Don Hung in, but Master Yen Ching wouldn't have it. We didn't even refuse. We weren't, like, not allowed to, you could say. We were denied. Still, I didn't let the difficulty get to me. In just a few weeks, my sword skills have improved a lot. Both my masters think I have unique talents in swordplay and are literally fighting each other to teach me their skills. Thanks to their guidance, I've actually made some progress. When I get back to the express, I'll definitely show off my skills and impress you all. <laughs> Looking forward to your reply. Yours, March 7th. 
Jason Nightflight by In the Delve, as the Warden's fast approaches. And the strict supervision of her two masters, March Seven trains tirelessly, almost developing Tennis Elbow. What is Tennis Elbow? I think it will be like some kind of condition tennis players usually have, but I've never heard of it. On a day after the sword training. <laughs> well done! Uh, let's call it a day. Miss March's sword skills are really coming along. She'll hold her own just fine in the war dance. Uh, maybe I should just defeating my masters. Uh, perhaps <laughs> I might have a shot at beating both masters in the ring. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Get real. You've only been practicing for a short while. How could that possibly happen? Well, we will see. With your talent, Miss March, if you dedicate a few more decades to training, you might eventually be able to defeat Yun Li. <laughs> decades? But I'll be an old lady by then. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe it? March 7th has actually become a pretty decent swordmaster in such a short time. Now I understand why Grandpa always had a grin on his face while training me. <laughs> Are you sure he wasn't laughing at you? Why oh, is Xing being up. so overly rude to her? It's so unnecessary. <laughs> it's all thanks to your amazing guidance, Masters. Miss March, you're really getting the hang of wielding dual swords. If you're keen on advancing, trying out different Sanjo blades can improve your touch. Oh, let me see. Which sword is the most powerful? Single sword? Great sword? Or maybe a flying sword? Hmm. Only I got my trusty Kantana right here. <laughs> There's no such thing as the most powerful sword. It's all about the skill of the sword master. Yenqing wields several flying swords, while I only wield one. But remember how I kicked his butt at the Alchemy Commission? Neither of you kicked butt. Fei Shao was the one who kicked butt and she didn't even actually do anything. <laughs> but she demonstrated her power quite easily. First, you didn't kick my butt. Second, you'll never kick my butt. Third, how about we settle this right now and see who kicks whose butt? You're too fixated on butts. Yeah, I'm up for that. <laughs> and if I kick your butt, you'll drop out of the war dance. Deal? Why are you two arguing again? I thought things had been improving between you lately. They will never improve. There was talk that the leading disciples of the Law Fu and Ju Ming generals were supposed to face off in the war dance, but for some reason, they suddenly teamed up to train an apprentice of their own. <laughs> Turns out, the rumors are true. Radio Charger. Tomorrow is the big day of the war dance. Shouldn't you two be focusing on honing your skills instead of teaching swordplay here? Uh, you're... Um, you're... Ah, oh, that's right! You're the pink-haired fox from the Yaoqing! Mm. <laughs> this is Mr. Jiaocho, the healer working for the general of the Xianzhou Yaoqing. Ah, got it. So, you're the participant attending the war dance on behalf of the Yao Qing. And you were trying to sneak a peek at our training? I doubt you were the one participating. Sorry for the misunderstanding. I don't know anything about martial arts. I'm just here on the general's orders to take care of some official business. 
I didn't mean to interrupt your training. I'll be on my way. If you know nothing about martial arts, why were you smirking earlier? <sighs> well, my curiosity got the better of me, I suppose. When I heard Miss March's pondering about what to learn, I couldn't help but wander over. From my professional experience, cleavers, slicers, chopping knives, and carving knives are all just tools. Kind of like frying, sautéing, boiling, and deep frying in cooking. They're just ways for people to show off their skills. How you use them really depends on the ingredients you're working with. Hmm. It's like your oh. sword teaching methods. If you align your ingredient, in other words, your apprentice's natural tendencies, with the right cooking method, by which I mean the teaching method that best suits her, she'll make double the progress in half the time. For example, golden eggplant tastes best when fried, cloud peppers when stir-fried, and yellow boulder beef when simmered. It's all about discovering the nature of the ingredients. Uh, I mean, Apprentice. The dude knows about his cooking, and I do like that. <laughs> I also like how all three options are like, I'm getting hungry. Don't not gonna lie. Yeah, that sounds tasty. All this talk about food is making me hungry. <laughs> a healer why are you talking about food well it's just a metaphor the medicinal school i follow on the senjo yaoching is called the ranja school that specializes in food therapy so it's only natural that i know a thing or two about cooking Is that what Baidu was implying when she said go enjoy some tasty food then? When she said that the Jaojo will most likely figure it out sooner or later anyway. Huh. So, you're the general's cook? I'm a healer. But anyway, a cook who isn't interested in health doesn't make for a good advisor. Fine. Call me a cook if you want. <laughs> Seeing the way you're looking at me, it's obvious you think I'm just some feeble academic who likes to blabber on about martial arts. But in reality, I know a thing or two about killing. After all, the art of healing inherently encompasses both life and death. True. Seriously? Trying to save face in front of kids? Ugh. Do you recognize this bottle of medicine in my hand? No. This is called tumble dust. An extract from an exotic flower named Yabra. <laughs> Ugh. Is it poison? <laughs> Yabra. Yeah, this already sounds like Yabra. Yeah. Bruh. yeah. <laughs> well. well, it depends on how it's used. With just one drop, it's able to numb a patient's body during surgery, making them painless throughout the entire process. However, increase the dose or the potency, and it'll slow the metabolism, making the blood thin and resulting in the loss of all senses. Even long-life species cannot escape its effects. This thing can save lives or take them. It's more powerful than the swords in your hands. Now he is really boasting and showing that up. That may be so, but still, I prefer settling things with a sword than, you know. Huh, looks like I did get you all wrong. You're not a feeble scholar. But a sinister and despicable one. Hey, hey, why the insults all of a sudden? I'm just sharing some medical knowledge here. Not persuading you to poison anyone. <laughs> Seems like you get real excited when talking about poison. I can't tell if that's an honorable thing or sinister. 
both picture this in a way two individuals the one standing is full of malice the other lying down is honorable and righteous how can the one who's lying down label the one standing as sinister in the throes of combat where life and death hinge on a singular moment every idea fades into nothingness the only thing that matters is staying alive. Surviving the battlefield reshapes all notions of worth, be it integrity or treachery. In my eyes, their significance is negligible. Perhaps you've underestimated Yunli and me, Mr. Zhao Cho. We may be young, but we've seen our fair share of war. Well, well, then you should know that the war dance is nothing more than a contest. So why are you so focused on it? When I was appointed as the ringmaster for the war dance, I asked the general, we Cloud Knights are supposed to charge into the fray and slay enemies. Why do we have to swing swords in a ring just to please an audience? And this is how the general replied. To unsheath your sword in a ring, is no different than on the battlefield, as your sword reveals the might of all Cloud Knights. The war dance is the perfect chance to showcase martial virtue and forge alliances from all over the cosmos. When we unsheath the sword without drawing blood, we not only display our might, but also the martial virtue of the Cloud Knights. That's Go. quite yes, an please. insightful statement, Yan Ching. Hmm? Well, my apologies for being so short-sighted. I've been on the Lawfu for quite some time, but I haven't had the chance to see the ceremony venue for myself yet. I cannot quite understand where uh, Jingyuan is coming from with that. Hearing you speak so highly of it has piqued my curiosity. Would you mind showing me around? You want to see the Sky Splitter ship where the war dance will be held? Let's go! I bet Yun Lee and Miss March haven't seen it either, right? Well then, I'll give you all a tour. Oh yeah. Because we, it's training to a sightseeing. Hmm. Let's go. I'll give you a tour of the Sky Splitter. Looks like a lot of other visitors have also come to catch a glimpse of the Sky Splitter. Hmm. Uh, what's up, Mr. Zhao Cho? Nah, it's nothing. He smelled something, didn't he? Do you see that airship in the distance? That's the Sky Splitter. The venue for the war dance ceremony. It looks impressive. It doesn't look all that impressive from this distance. <laughs> he says off the mic comment. I think the Sky Splitter is actually a decommissioned Lafu military vessel. People aren't allowed on board until the war dance officially commences. Tomorrow, when the bell rings and the ceremonial cannons roar, I'll be there representing the Cloud Knights of the Sianjo Lafu. Standing in the ring, ready to take on challengers from all over the cosmos. Since I was a kid, I've been training in swordplay and the art of war under the general. Every day, I'd swing my sword 10,000 times, and then thrust it 10,000 times, repeating the process over and over. I understand that I'm not like other kids. I never envied the toys and freedom they all had. I never found sword practice boring or hard. Even in the thick of battle, facing down savage abominations, I never felt scared. Each day, I could feel myself getting stronger and stronger, and I racked up countless victories. It's the best feeling in the world. 
But then, I faced a really tough opponent. And just one slash shattered my confidence into a thousand pieces. That's when I felt true fear for the first time. Maybe that's what Mr. Zhao Cho meant by life and death hinge on a singular moment. Every idea fades into nothingness. Mm -hmm. After that, I had to pick up the pieces and try to put myself back together. But no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't seem to find my old happy self again. I often ask myself, why do I wield my sword? If defeat is inevitable, why do I continue to fight? Is it to reclaim the joy of victory? To meet the general's expectations? Or to secure my honor among the Cloud Knights? And while the general could teach me the art of swordplay, he couldn't teach me why I should keep on going. He said the reason must come from within myself. I've been struggling to find that reason. But after talking with you, Mr. Zhao Cho, I think I already have that reason in mind. As a member of the Cloud Knights and the General's Apprentice, I've had a weight on my shoulders. And I know there's still more to shoulder. But when I wield my sword, it feels like I'm letting go of everything. I love the feeling of giving it my all, facing any obstacle in front of me, pressing forward. That's why I wield my sword. Why didn't you sing monologue? Oh, Yanqing. So young, yet so grown up. By the way, how old are you exactly? Age doesn't really matter. All sword masters will understand how I feel. Hmm. I get it. Looks like all the kids on the Lawfu live tough lives. So, how about you, Miss Yunli? It's not polite to ask a girl her age. No matter which Siando ship you're on. <laughs> I'm not asking your age. I'm asking if you have a dream like Yan Ching has. You don't talk like a cook. You sound more like a TV host or something. <laughs> Need I repeat myself again? I'm a healer. Well, I... I don't have a dream like Yan Ching does. The only reason I'm participating in the Ringmaster's Challenge is because I made a promise to my grandfather that I'd win the precious sword he's contributed to the war dance. Sounds like that mind of yours is just filled with swords. <laughs> I bet you've got nothing better on your mind. My father was a craftsman on the Sienjo Juming. Because of his foolishness, many innocent people fell victim to the cursed swords he forged. Since I was a kid, it's been clear to me that not everyone deserves to have a weapon in their hands. Giving them a sword is no different than being cruel to the innocent. So, whenever I come across someone unworthy of a sword, I can't help but want to take it away from them. <laughs> Given that Yen Qing is the war dance ringmaster, I'm stepping up to challenge him. To ensure the precious sword doesn't fall into the hands of an unworthy master. Hey, what do you mean by an unworthy master? <sighs> I see. It's not easy for kids on the Ju Ming either. Well, it's better to have a reason for wielding a sword than to be lost and confused. I've saved countless Cloud Knights in my life. And there are plenty of exceptional warriors, just like the two of you. What happened, Mr. Zhao Cho? Oh, oh, nothing. I was just reminded of some old friends and old tales. 
Huh. Judging from my professional perspective as a healer, both of you possess remarkable vitality. Your energies flow like raging fires and mighty gales. The upcoming fight will definitely be impressive. Well, we've seen the Sky Splitter and toured the Stargazer Navalia. I guess it's time to say goodbye for now. What? You're leaving already? But you haven't asked me about my dreams. <laughs> I've been working hard too, you know. Oh, feeling after all. It's March. getting late, Miss March. Unlike you lot, I'm a grown-up bound by responsibilities and duties. The tasks entrusted to me by the general won't complete themselves. By the way, Yan Ching, is it normal to have so many people wandering around in an automated area like the Stargazer Navalia? Actually, this is a restricted area, but since you're all guests, I made an exception, so you could take a look around. I understand. Well, I'll take my leave. I wish you both the best of luck in the ring tomorrow. What makes the free people be so early even more suspicious? tour of the sky splitter shall we continue with our training why don't we take a day off what you want to secretly practice sword play by yourself dream on <laughs> you know cramming before a fight never works out for some reason seeing the sky splitter has boosted my confidence so I've decided to conserve my strength for tomorrow all right, I'll take you out of the Stargazer Navalia. All right. Let's leave them. Oh, just shut up, Red Fang. This is not a beast ship. I need some time to take care of things. You willingly donned the skin of a lowly beast to join this mission, dedicating yourself to our glorious cause. And now you're telling me you can't handle it? Do you realize how many ships we need? I'm doing my best, all right? It takes time to figure all this out. When the guns go off tomorrow, all eyes will be on it. That'll be our only chance. How's us? Who's there? Who are you guys? An impromptu inspection. Why are there outsiders loitering in Stargazer Navalia? And uh, a bunch of kids at that. <laughs> Kids, didn't your parents ever tell you to stay away from the Stargazer Navalia? I know it's an automated facility, but it doesn't mean you can just break in and do what you want. He doesn't even know who he's talking to. First of all, I'm an adult. Second, I didn't just break in. Yeah, we flew here on a star skip. Like, whoosh! You're bad at lying, Yang Jing. Stop trying. Well, I'm not trying to tell you off. But this place is off limits to the public, you know? Uh, big sis, let's go. I, I want to play in Ever Hunt Plains. Huh? Ever Hunt Plains? Uh... Uh, yeah, sure. A big sis will take you there. Shuha! You should have let me. Shh, the overhaul is done, and everything looks good. We should leave.
Could you repeat what you just said, Yanqing? What did I say? Big sis, let's go. I want to play in Everhorn Plains. <laughs> uh, come on, can't you read the room? Something is definitely off about the three people we just met. Yeah, anyone could see that. <laughs> I just wanted to hear you say it again. That pink haired fox tried to say something. I'm pretty sure he sent something fishy. Since he's not familiar with this place, he just dropped us a hint. But you didn't seem to be paying attention at all. I knew that from the beginning. That Cloud Knight didn't recognize Master Yen Ching at all. That's really weird. What? <laughs> Is he famous on the Wavu or something? Not even the Cloud Knights on the Juming, who all know my glorious name, might recognize my face. You have a point. A Cloud Knight, a member from the Skyfaring Commission, and a craftsman. They're from various departments, and the reason for the overhaul seems legit. But one of them blurted out some weird language just now. Did you hear that? Definitely did, yep. <sighs> I have a feeling that if we secretly tail them, we'll definitely catch these guys in the act. Follow my lead, and be careful not to blow our cover. Okay, but I say we will do the tailing another time. Then it's definitely getting late. Wanna go take some pictures? Or and I don't maybe you can go drink some immortals delight. And I don't wanna like have it go on for too much longer. So let's go back to the toy blazer. So I can still farm stuff. Um But yeah. We will be stopping here for today. But definitely continuing this soon. Especially this I don't know how much longer does the event actually go? 32 days? Yeah, okay. I'm gonna definitely give it uh, another look soon. Uh, already got a lot more achievements again. Sweet. Not tight bells. Thank you. Mm, okay. And also with that being said, let's see if someone's online where we can raid. For the game, I would say. <sighs> then let's look around a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. She's not even playing a star, right? Um, you would expect when someone is streaming in the star right category that they would play star right, but apparently not. Yeah. Let's 
let's pick the one I saw <laughs> earlier. <laughs> I'm not like not really finding a small one. Core will prefer all the raid. So we're just leaving <sighs> that today with auto raid, I will say. <sighs> but here. <yeah. laughs> with that being said, I hope you enjoyed it for today. I definitely will be playing more of the story next time and hopefully also some of like the World Ends event properly. And maybe for that I will also level up my march a bit. But I'm also still leveling my game late. Well, with them. <laughs> but yeah. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave some support. Or feedback. Both are always appreciated. And we'll see each other next time. Until then. Bye bye.